Shalom. Barak to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Karkadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in. Much honors and respects to the apostles and others of Great Millstone and to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and truth. I say Shalom. All right, back for another quick lesson. Uh, I'm going to title it, It is Given Unto You to Know the Mysteries. All right, those mysteries being the parables, the dark things, you know, the uh, allegories, which, you know, mean symbolism. All right, and in particular, of course, the prophecies. All right, and it's given on to who to know that? The disciples of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. All right, and that starts with the elect. It is only given on to the elect. Not everybody can come into the council of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You can't even walk in unawares. All right, it just doesn't work that way. All right. Um, Give me a minute, we'll come back to this, all right? Uh, first, let me read this here in verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? All right? And we're going to look that word up in the blue letter. Matter of fact, let's do that right now, all right? Give me a minute. All right, this is the blue letter, all right, for the word parable. Strong's G, 3850, parabole, parabole. All right. Metaphorically speaking, an example by which a doctrine or precept, and again, how are we supposed to read the scriptures? Here a little, there a little, all right? Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Where do we read that? Isaiah 28 and 10, all right? And give me a moment. I'll take you to another precept. Let's continue reading this here. See, a parable, an earthly story with heavenly meaning. All right, in other words, it's wisdom, people. All right, you see, an aphorism, aphorism, a maximum, see, a proverb. All right, matter of fact, give me a minute. What is an aphorism? All right, aphorism, what is that? See, a pithy observation that contains a general truth, right? And all of the scriptures, that's what it contains, nothing but truth, all right? See, saying, maximum, see that precept, see that dictum, see, pearl of wisdom, proverb, you understand, expression, phrase, all right? You understand? So again, this is not for everyone because not everybody's going to get it. There's a reason for that, because certain spirits were chosen before the foundation of the world, before the world began. And I'll take us there in a minute. First, let me take you to a precept to show you that it's two precepts that you get your understanding. All right? So give me a minute. This is Psalms 119, 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. See that? So from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, you have nothing but truth. You have the testimonies of the Most High, Yahweh, right? Given on to the prophet through the messengers, the angels. And then you have the testimony of his son, Yahweh Shai. Okay? You understand that, people? All right? All right, uh, now let me take you to the blue letter to prove to you that, uh, again, this was given on to certain spirits, right, amongst Israel, 
That's you. You're going to find that all out when we get in the blue letter. All right? Let's go over there. Give me a minute. All right, this is 2 Peter 1.10. All right? My favorite scriptures. All right? And it says, Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence, all right? Which means being consistent. All right? Never taking your hand off the plow. Anyone who does that is unfit for the kingdom. All right? Uh, as you read, I believe, uh, what is that? Luke uh, 9 and 62. All right. All right. To give diligence, to make your calling, calling gets into the word invite. Again, you have to be called in. You don't walk in unawares. All right. And remember that no one chooses the Lord. He chooses you. As you read in St. John's 15, 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So when did that choosing take place? You're about to find out. We're going to get into the word election here. All right? Strong's G, 1589, Eklage. Eklage. All right. This will prove to you that this was all done in the heavens. You were sanctified certain individual spirits, all right, amongst Israel, were sanctified and ordained. In other words, it was decreed all in the heavens when you were spirit. This is going to prove it right here, all right? So what does it mean to be part of the elect? The act of picking out choosing. The act of the Most High's free will by which before the foundation of the world, see, before the world began, he decreed his blessings to certain persons. You're going to find out those persons, it's talking about Israelites, right? This is going to tell you that, right? All that's going to be made, you know, manifest to you. Give me a moment. Let's continue reading. The decree made from choice by which he determined to bless certain persons through Yahweh Shai the Mashiach, right, his son, by grace alone. A thing or a person chosen of persons chosen for what? For the Most High's elect, right? Now, we're going to scroll back up. It says root etymology. We're going to click on that. All right. Now, what does it say here? To pick out, choose, to pick, or to choose out for oneself. Again, St. John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And when you're reading St. John 15, 16, if you scroll down to the last verse, verse 29, you'll read there, Thou has been with me from the beginning, it will tell you. That thou has been with me from the beginning. Those spirits, the first fruits. Yahweh Shai was the first fruit, first spirit ever created. Then the spirits that came after that were created by Yahweh Shai. As everything that you see. All right? Okay? After the Heavenly Father created Yahweh Shai. All right? So, that's why he tells you, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Right? Okay. Choosing one for office. Right? An office within, you know, Yahweh Shai's. All right? Kingdom. Okay? Of the Most High, choosing whom he judged fit to receive favors... See, and separate. What does separate mean? To be sanctified. Okay? From the rest of mankind. You see that? You were sanctified. And we already know that this was decreed in the heavens because we just finished reading it. Right? Particularly of his own. Right? So we were separated, sanctified, and ordained. All right? To be what? To go out. And be prophets. Okay? Do you understand? As you read in Jeremiah 1 and 5. 
All right, give me a minute. What does it say here? Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, right? Before he formed you in your mother's womb, I knew thee. How would he know you? He created you. When he created you as a spirit. Okay? And then that spirit is placed into the newborn, again, within the line of the seed of your fathers. Okay? And to whoever, you know, is carrying that seed, which would be his wife, his woman. All right? You understand, people? Okay? So, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. That's how he knew you. He created you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, out of your mother's womb, you see, I sanctified it. That means to be made holy and separate. Okay? And I ordained thee, see? And another word for ordain is decreed. And where did he do this? In the heavens. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. See that? All right, let's get back. Give me a minute. All right. So, of the most high choosing whom he judged fit to receive favors and separate from the rest of mankind, right? And that's what you find out when you're in this truth. Because who else can you talk to but a brother within this truth? where you're of the same mindset, okay, of the same beliefs, all right? You understand? And it, nobody else in your family, if they were not, to, they, they couldn't understand you. They wouldn't understand this. It's not for them. It wasn't given out to them, all right? So to be separated from the rest of mankind, to be particularly of his own, to be attended to continually by his grace's oversight, you see right here, i.e., Israelites. You see, and nobody, so these people going around calling themselves Christian, they're not Christian. They can call themselves whatever they want. Who gives a shit? All right? But they're not the Christians because in order to be a Christian, you would have to be an Israelite. You understand? So these people have no idea. They have no understanding of these scriptures. All right, and the scriptures are meant for the Israelites, written by Israelites, for the Israelites, in particular the elect. See, of the Most High Father choosing Christians, which would be Israelites, as those whom he set apart from the irreligious multitude as dear unto himself, right? The men that the Heavenly Father gave him, the spirits, Okay, that no one shall pluck them from his hand, right? Nobody's going to pluck them from the Father's hand, whom he has rendered through faith in Yahweh Shai, citizens in the Messiah kingdom. You see that? So that the ground of the Troy lies with Yahweh Shai, Wahamachiyak, and his merits only. There you go. All right, people, we'll end this here. We'll be right back with part two. Shalom.